Our country could see 500,000 COVID-19 deaths by mid-February, but Cincinnati is actually home to some of the top scientists working behind the scenes right now to prevent as many deaths as possible. WCPO 9 News reporter Courtney Francisco takes you inside their lab as they test a third vaccine that could continue saving lives. A team in this lab in our backyard could help save lives around the globe. Here's what we found when we went inside. Take a deep breath in, out. As the nation struggles to immunize more people faster. Regular breathing. Cincinnati scientists and doctors are testing what could be the nation's third COVID-19 vaccine to speed up the process. How have you been doing? Dr. Are Antoinette you? Pergalis really is right? an investigator like, for studies listen. like this at CTI, a greater Cincinnati company that researches major medical issues. We're doing the COVID studies, both treatment as well as vaccine. Susanna Ibarra is one of our neighbors who volunteered to let them study the Janssen vaccine's effects on her body. You have to be part of something important part of something important to to make this world better, I think. A mom of two, wife, a businesswoman. She migrated here from Mexico City and now lives in Loveland, where her catering business is suffering greatly due to the virus. Any soreness in the arms? Mm -mm. No? Great. Like most of us, she knows people who have died from the virus, seen people isolated from family, watched the jobless rate tick up. It's like living a, like a nightmare. But the decision to help is now a bright spot. You have to save your piece of paper where you say that you were part of it and you have to show that to your grandkids one day because maybe it's going to be part of history. CTI founder Tim Schroeder says pre-pandemic CTI would have as many as 150 different studies going on globally. Many people, rightfully so, have focused on the impact of, of COVID itself, but the secondary impact on research in general. Doctors say long-term complicated studies with ill but hopeful patients were shut down. Didn't want to bring, like in a cancer study, bring sick people with cancer into a place where we were worried about COVID. And the question is, how do you, in your best way possible, continue to move things forward? So technology, use of, of, uh, of, of phones, uh, use, uh, you know, video, obviously we've gone to telemedicine for a lot, of, a lot of things. His team is developing ways to research from afar. Whether it's wearables, whether it's implantables, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's the use of, of, of things like drones to get both medical uh, supplies to, a, to an individual. What does research look like 10 years from now and how much of that did we advance over the last 10 months? Dr. Pergalis agrees. Yes, yes. The science community is also examining what was held back in the last 10 months. I mean, I hate to use the word irreparable. I have to pick back up and start sometimes a little bit all over with getting the numbers and how the patients are responding and their blood work and all of that. So, I mean, I'd like to think it was more, it's more of a delay. We just don't know how delayed the, it, it's going to be. The CTI team hopes to get FDA emergency approval for the vaccine they're working on in the coming weeks. Reporting in Norwood, Courtney Francisco, WCPO 9 News.